I guess you're an OOP. Are you not an OOP? Yeah, you know me. Let's extract our way to clean the code and see what's behind the scenes. So continuing our OOP journey, it's time to dive into one of the core principles, abstraction. And this concept helps us manage complexity by hiding the details and showing other essentials. So what is abstraction? Abstraction is the process of simplifying complex systems by modeling classes appropriate to the problem and working at the most relevant level of inheritance for a particular aspect of the problem. Uh, so to keep it very simple here, um, it simplifies complex systems. By using abstraction, we only need to focus on the essentials of it, and we can ignore the intricate details. I think of it like a blueprint. Stuff, or like, oh, you want classes of this part to work. Um, and they hide implementation details. We hide the complex implementation details from the user and exposing only what, what is necessary. So some real world examples, uh, consider a car. When you drive a car, you use the steering wheel, the pedals, the gear shifts. You don't need to know how the engine works internally, uh, how the fuel is processed, how the brakes uh, system operates. This is an abstraction in action. You interact with the simplified interface without worrying about the underlying complexity. So abstraction in Java, uh, in Java abstraction is achieved using abstract classes and interfaces. So an abstract class, abstract classes, an abstract class is a class that cannot be instantiated and is often used to define common characteristics or subclasses. So for example, as you see, we have an abstract class animal uh, and there's an abstract method in here. It doesn't have anything in it, it's just there. And it's called public, public abstract void um, so it doesn't return anything. It's just an abstract one. And it's called make sound. What does make sound do? Oh, it just makes sound. Don't worry about it. Um, and then we have a, a regular method there that actually looks something. So we have public void eat. Does this animal eat it? No. Can eat? Time to eat? Oh, the animal's eating. Um, it doesn't return anything. It's just how it does. It just prints that out. But sound. Make sound. Well, who knows what it do? I don't know. There's only animal, right? They make different sounds. Um, and so we're going to actually extend from our animal class we created. And we're going to create a class called dog. Okay, let's create that class called dog. So as you can see here, um, class dog, it extends animal. So we need to give it a little bit more details now because we know we're talking about a dog. Okay, so uh, for make sound, no longer it's strap strap. That was the abstract method we created. And here we can just tell it, hey, make sound. You're going to return nothing. You're just going to say woof woof. So that's what a dog does. It says woof woof. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at, look at the example. So I'm going to create my dog. My dog, dog. My dog is my dog's dog. Okay. Dog is my dog. It's, it's my dog's a dog. Okay? So, so my dog is a, a dog object. Um, so we have our constructor, our default constructor, because we didn't make one. Um, for the only period of the dog class. Um, so we're gonna tell my dog to make it make a sound. Of course, it's gonna say woof woof, and we're gonna tell it to eat. And that was created in the abstract method. Uh, sorry, in the abstract class, there was a method that was created that told us how dogs eat or how any animal eats. They're eating. <laughs> okay. So let's take a let's take a look at that. Woof woof. This dog is eating. Okay. All right. So this example, animal is an abstract class with an abstract method to make sound. Um, and dog is a concrete class that extends animal and provides the implementation of make sound. Uh, you can't, you cannot create an instance of animal directly though. Okay. So interfaces, interfaces provide a way to achieve complete abstraction. This can only contain abstract methods um, until Java 8, which introduced like a default static method in interfaces, but um, yeah, anyway. So let's look at an example. Since I mentioned vehicle earlier, let's do an interface for a vehicle. So interface of vehicle. Um, and we're going to create uh, a void start and a void stop. So there are abstract methods already. The, the vehicle has a start and a stop. Okay. But when we implement something from that vehicle, such as a car, so let's implement the car class, um, we can give more details about it starting and stopping. And those methods that we had that were abstract before for interface. Okay. So we're going to uh, create the method for start, 
for a cause specifically, you can say, hey, if we're just going to, it's going to return nothing, it's just going to say the car is starting. Similarly, stop is just going to say the car is stopping. Okay. All right. So, uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, as you can see here, car is starting, car is stopping. Because we created my car, that is a car object, and we tell my car to start, and my car to start. Starting, car stopping. So in this example, a uh, vehicle is an interface with two abstract methods, start and stop. Our car implements that vehicle interface and provides the implementation for both methods. So why would you use abstraction? Well, it, again, it manages that complexity. complexity excuse me. Um, abstraction allows us to manage complexity by breaking down a system into smaller, man more manageable parts. It improves code readability um, because by focusing on what an object does instead of how it does it, we improve code readability and manageability. And it provides reusability. Abstract classes and interfaces promote code reusability and consistency across, across different parts of the program. Because um, you have like that blueprint for other things in it. So we could, let's just use vehicle for boats. Planes, they all start to stop, right? Uh, my feet. <laughs> so anyway, key points. So uh, abstract classes, they cannot be instantiated. You, you, you don't create an instance of an abstract class. Um, but you, you can have abstract methods in those without bodies, so they have nothing in them, and concrete methods with bodies, so they, they have details of what they do. Uh, they either do or they don't. It doesn't matter. But they don't, they're abstract. They do, they use them. Um, in the interfaces, these define a contract. When you use the classes that implement an interface, they must provide implementation. They must provide implementations for an abstract method in that interface. So you're like saying you're contractually obligated that I will have the following in it because I am an interface. I am uh, I am implementing this interface. So I am implementing this interface, therefore I will have the following. Because it said I have to. Uh, whereas the other one abstract because because it's a class, we are extending that class. So in summary, abstraction is all about hiding the complexities and showing only the essential features of an object. Whether using abstract classes or interfaces, this principle helps in designing a system that is easier to manage and understand. So are you down with OOP? Yeah, you know me. We're abstracting complexity. And our code's fantastic, you see. Stay tuned as we continue our journey through OOP, making our code cleaner and more manageable and a whole lot of fun to work with. And it just tastes so